Hello, welcome back to the OTB channel. Have you ever thought about installing a really lightweight distro, perhaps just using a window manager such as Openbox? And ideally, you'd like it to be based on Arch. But rather than installing it from scratch, you'd prefer if the distribution gave you a little bit of a lift and that you ended up quite quickly with a fully configured desktop. Perhaps Arch Labs could be for you. Let's go to the intro and we'll uh, look at it in more detail. Right, welcome back. Um, so Arch Labs... The reason that I'm going to do a quick installation and review, well, there are two reasons, really. Quite a few of my viewers have requested that I have a look at this distro. I've never looked at it before, so I'm quite open-minded. And also, I know that it's primarily an open-box distro. And I've fallen in love a little bit with OpenBox uh, over the last three or four weeks. Uh, as you know, I've been using it on my current setup. But I've got to the point now where my little X131E, uh, my little ThinkPad, this, uh, this beast is time for a change. I've been running uh, Debian distros. Um, I ran uh, Peppermint and uh, Linux Mint on it, uh, dual booting, and it's the one that I take with me when I'm staying away during the week, and uh, it's been great, but it's time for a change. I had a very brief spin with Arco Linux, uh, which I enjoyed. I know I haven't reviewed Arco Linux uh, specifically, uh, other than uh, looking at its um, Ar Arch Linux. Arch Linux D, I think it was a few a uh, few weeks ago or a month or so ago, and I will get back to that. But I want something lightweight. I want something usable. I want something that will just work for me. I've been with the Debian distros. It's now now time to switch over to the Arch distros, um, and Arch Labs is quite interesting. I'll say right from the word go that it isn't a GUI installer. It's a text-based installer which bears similarities to the Arch Phi script, if anything else. But it does take you through it. You don't need to know all sorts of different commands. So, Arch Labs, what is it? Let's go to the split screen. Some of you might be familiar with uh, an open box distro uh, called Bunsen Labs, which is Debian based, and I believe the current version is still based on Debian 9. Well, as it says here, Arch Labs is an Arch based distro influenced and inspired by the look and feel of Bunsen Labs with the intermediate to advanced user in mind. So it's explicitly saying this isn't necessarily a distro for beginners. You need to have had some sort of experience. And you only have to look at the web page and the color scheme uh, to see that um, Arch Labs may well have been inspired by Bunsen Labs, but lurking in the background, we perhaps have Crunchbang, um, which was a, a very minimal distro, and uh, it sort of utilize this sort of color scheme. So what's it all about then? Well, let's just have a read here. So it's launched by two guys with a love of love of Bunsen Labs and Arch Linux. So they've they've essentially started off trying to produce a Bunsen Labs, but that was Arch based. Um and as they say here, the original vision was to take the look of Bunsen Labs and just put it on top of Arch uh, because Arch has more up-to-date packages. Sure, compared to Debian Stable. Um, they also like Pac-Man and, of course, the AUR. But now that it's become established, Arch Labs apparently has developed its own look. 
We've kept true to our legacy by keeping our ISO images as minimal as possible and adding only core applications and utilities. Okay, let's just go and have a look very quickly. Uh, 657 megs uh, I'm looking at here is what um, the ISO was. So it would still fit on a CD. So that's pretty impressive in itself. Uh, highlights, well, it's a minimal desktop environment. Easy installation using the AL installer or the ALI. So it's a text sort of installer, but it's menu driven. So, okay, good. Minimal themes based on Arch. A whole range of window managers and desktop uh, environments. Openbox certainly, but i3, BSPWM, DWM, and others. Okay, so it's not just one window manager. It's a range of window managers. And I believe they have a range of desktop environments that you can choose from as well. Uh, you can freely switch between panels and docks. Conky and Tint2 uh, available where necessary. Uh, various themes, etc., etc. Okay, so it looks good. Don't know what it's going to be like. Um, I did a basic installation in VirtualBox uh, during the week just to set everything up for this. Um, and the main reason for doing that, I haven't looked at the distro, I've just done a basic installation which uh, took a few minutes. I want to install this on my X131E and I'm going to do the installation and try and capture it in OBS um, with my capture card. The screen though on the X131E is tiny compared to my full HD screen here. So I'm going to have to crop it somewhat. So it might be a bit fuzzy. It's fine as far as the text installation is concerned, but once the installation is complete, I'm going to swap over to VirtualBox just so that you can see the installation in full HD and uh, it's probably going to render a lot better. But for now, let's crack on. Let's have a look at the installation and see what we think. Right, so uh, I've booted the USB containing the Arch Labs ISO on my uh, ThinkPad X131E. I've got it set up to boot in EFI mode, and the first thing that happens once I've booted and it goes, up, uh, goes through its startup routine is I get this little text box. What do I want to do? A standard install, run a live session, change the installation name or set root etc etc well do you know what i'm just going to go for the standard install this reminds me very much of what a slackware installation is like it's a little bit old, old school but not necessarily anything wrong with that so the standard install asks me to type arch labs installer and let's hit enter and see what happens so this will help me get Arch Labs installed and set up on my system. If I'm unsure about a section, the default option will be listed or the first selected item will be the default. Okay, great. So it's asking me first of all to set up my locale. So I'm looking for GB. There it is near the top. Right, so it's now asking me, do I want to use a wired connection or a Wi-Fi connection? Well, actually, I did intend to hook this up by wire to my, um, my router directly, thinking that it wouldn't automatically pick up my Wi-Fi chip, which is a Broadcom chip in this X131E. Um, but I can see it's giving me a list of different wireless networks in my area. The second one is mine, so I'm really impressed to start off with. It's picked up the Broadcom chip. So, could not activate connection. The access point, blah, 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 was not in the scan list. Uh, it's there. Right, okay, perhaps not then. I wonder if I can rescan this. 
Ah. Activate. There we go. Could not activate connection. Right, well, let's go back to my original uh, view and let's do a wired connection. Let me just plug in the Ethernet cable. Okay, we're all good. I've just plugged in the uh, Ethernet cable and let's proceed from here. So activate, which presumably is just looking for DHCP. Maybe I need to now move down to quit. Yeah, okay, that's great. This is the installer main menu. Once a setup is complete, or once a step is complete, you'll return here. On success, successful completion of a step, the cursor will be advanced to the next step. On failure, the cursor will be placed on the step required to advance. Okay, so show device tree. What have we got here? So we have a single SSD in here. It has a VFAT connect, uh, partition, which is the ESP partition, and it currently has an EXT4 partition. I've got that set up currently with uh, Arco Linux on it. So what do I want to do next? Let's go to partitioning. Choose carefully when editing, formatting, and mounting partitions or your data may be lost. Yeah, absolutely great. Um... Right, so, I'm just going to try auto and see if that works. All data on dev SDA will be destroyed and the following partitions will be created. A FAT32 EFI boot partition, okay, and an EXT uh, partition for all the remaining space, that's great, yes. So, it's creating new partitions by the look of it, that's fine. And we'll just wait for it to do its thing. Process complete. Great. I don't want to do Lux encryption. I don't want to use LVM. I do want to mount the partitions. So, select whether to use a swap file. I'm going to select none. Oh, I'll tell you what. Let's create a swap file. We'll leave it at the default and just click OK. Right, select bootloader. What do I want to use? I want to use Grub. So I'll just select that. Right, username and password. Well, let's just put in OTB and my password. And let's repeat it. Let's go to root, again, repeat it, and click OK. System configuration, let's have a look. What do I want to use? All ah, right, what kind of shell do I want to use? ZSH, Bash, or MKSH? I'm going to stick with Bash because that's what I know. I keep saying to myself, I'm going to have a look at ZSH, but now is not that time. Host name for the new system, we'll stick with the default, Arch Labs. And we'll now set the locale. So let's have a look for the ENs. And there we go, GB. And we'll set our time zone. So we're looking for Europe and London. What kind of kernel do I want? Do I want the latest Linux kernel or do I want to use the long-term support kernel? I'm going to use the LTS kernel as I will be using uh, this little lappy constantly. Select the window manager or desktop. Okay. Right, and these are my options. i3 gaps, open box, DWM, BSPWM, JWM, XFCE4, Awesome, Fluxbox, Plasma, Gnome, or Cinnamon. Right, so this is an all-in-one system, essentially. I want to go with Openbox, and to highlight that, I'm just going to hit the space bar. But you know what? I'm going to have a backup as well. I'm going to install XFCE, just to see what happens. 
So that'll do. Let me click OK. Select what kind of login management to use. Right, I'm going to use Light DM. It works for me. Select additional packages. Right, so what do I want to install here? Um, let's just go down here and have a look. I'll install Chromium. I'm not an Emacs man. I also like to have Firefox on the system. I like Genie. Yes, the GIMP. GUC view. Yeah, I've got a little webcam on here. LibreOffice Fresh. Yeah, why not? And let's install some fonts. OBS Studio. That might be useful. PC Man FM. Absolutely. Simple screen recorder. Terminator. I like that as a terminal. Thunderbird. Absolutely. I like Transmission GTK. TTF Font Awesome. Why not? VLC. Why not? The XFC terminal should probably be installed anyway. Um... Did I miss Kden Live? Was it an option here? Let's just go back and have a look. Yes, it was. Kden Live. Do you know that'll do to start off with? And let's hit OK. Run a command on the install system. Um, I don't think I need to do that. View configuration and command selections. So we're going to set up a few partitions here. It looks to me like it's going to set up a SDA1 and SDA2. We're not using LVM or Lux. Okay, we've set up the username. And we've specified a number of packages. Okay, all good. Confirm choices and start the installation. And off we go. And we'll come back in a second. Right, so uh, the installation finished. It took a little while, uh, 13, 14 minutes, uh, and then I rebooted. And as you can see, we are at a light DM screen. The default is open box. So let me just put in my password and see what it takes us to. And we get a very nice straightforward and plain very plain but nicely configured open box screen let's just have a look at this it's got the GIMP which I asked it to install it's got Chromium and Firefox and Thunderbird and Transmission which is great we've got open office there floating XFCE We've got preferences. What have we got in preferences? We've got AR and R, which is great. Advanced network configuration. The display module. This looks like to be all the uh, XFCE options here. And on the system itself, we have HTOP. Just out of interest, let's see what it's running. 280 megabits. Bytes, should I say. Um... That's pretty low. It really is. So, a nicely configured desktop. Arch installed from scratch. Let's have a look and see exactly how it's made up. In order to do this, and in order to get a slightly better quality screen, I'm going to switch over to VirtualBox now, where I can show it in full uh, 1920 by 1080 without scaling the screen up so it should be crisper and uh, sharper okay then so uh 
let's return to the desktop. So now we can look around the system. Well, first of all, it is very plain, but that's open box, and you can pretty much do with open box whatever you like. It's using the Tint 2 panel, and just to see what else has been launched, if now I'm opening the file manager, which is what? This is Thunar, I see it has it installed by default. If I open the .config directory and uh, I move over to Openbox, let me have a look at the auto start. Right, so it's starting XFs SE or XF settings uh, right from the beginning. So it's not open box, plain and simple with nothing else. It's also starting the XFCE settings, which is great. It can help you out with quite a few things. It's starting the Tint 2 panel, which is what we've got up here, and it's using nitrogen for wallpaper, which is brilliant. So all good. What I haven't seen before is this little menu. I've done a bit of a fiddle on uh, my menu, uh, which you might have seen when I installed Openbox a few weeks ago, but it was basically just a copy of the standard right-click menu that we have here. I'm not sure what this actually is. JG menu. So if you right-click it, it brings up all the different sections, which I'm presuming you can edit to your heart's content. But I'm not necessarily sure that you'd want to. It looks like a dynamic menu to me. In fact, I can confirm it is. On my original VirtualBox install, I hadn't installed the GIMP. I've just installed it via Pac-Man, and it appeared automatically in the menu. So that's all good. We still, of course, have your standard open box right-click menu here. So there's a screenshot tool. There is a, a little menu entry to go to uh, places. So if we uh, browse there, there's nothing in it at the moment. Okay, so it just opens up the file manager. Our preferences. So for open box, we can go to obconf, which is the configuration for open box itself, where you can play about with the various themes that are installed. You can, of course, install other themes. What else have we got? Um, Compton, restart, disable, or even edit your Compton.conf. Uh, Conky chooser. Okay, well, Conky didn't start by default, which I quite like, but uh, let's just have a look at Conky chooser. Right, Arch Lab Labs Conky RC. Oh, and there we have it now. Um, transparency there, and it's nice and straightforward and simple. Okay, all good. What else have we got on this right-click menu? Nitrogen. Let's launch it. And we see, actually, a quite impressive range of different wallpapers. What shall we choose? Something like that, perhaps? Yeah, why not? Um, I know it looks quite grey, but don't forget you can download any wallpaper you want and you can customise it as you want. What else is here? Um, XFCE4 appearance settings. Okay, so you can change your icon sets. If you prefer to use XFCE, go for it. What else? XFCE4 power settings, which strangely enough hasn't launched. Can we get that from here? Let's have a look. XFCE4 power settings. Let's go to power manager. Okay, it launches from there. Possibly something to do with the key bindings. Pulse audio volume control. Good, 
And uh, what else? XFC for Settings Manager. Okay, so you can change things around from here. Uh, if we go to the desktop, I presume we can set our wallpaper from here as well. But uh, let's just have a look-see. Does it give us the option to apply it? No, it doesn't. It's obviously based on nitrogen for that, but no problem. What else? Uh, help and information. Right, so various links to uh, the Arch Labs homepage, the forum, the Google+, the Arch Labs knowledge base. So let's just open up that. And not found that's a bit annoying but never mind what about something else help and info the arch labs forum okay so that is taking us to the forum which is great if it's your first time with uh, an arch system you might find that quite helpful where are we? Uh, forum, basic health and support, scripts, tutorials and tips. And then generally speaking, we have a load of links to open box guides, not Arch Labs uh, specific, just general guides. And it even has a link to the Arch Wiki there and the Debian Wiki and uh, Urakama's open box, open box guide. Okay, so quite useful. You've also got uh, a method here of looking to see what your key bindings are. You can either display them in a window or have a look at them in the menu. Well, let's display them in a window. So we can swap desktops here to start off with. I can see I'm at uh, desktop one. If I want to go to desktop 2, it says W2, which is the Windows key plus 2. So there's the second window. What about 3? Yeah. And 4? Yeah. And back to 1? Okay. So there are various ways of doing that. Uh, you can send applications to desktop. So if I wanted to send this so that'll be shift windows 2 so shift windows 2 and i'm already on work uh, workspace number two so shift windows 1 sends me back there all good what else have we got uh, a range of different uh, key bindings already set up for you uh, you can control the volume with your key bindings, which I've got my volume uh, disabled in VirtualBox, but you've got it up here anyway. What else have we got? Let's move down. Some various key bindings here to launch your file manager. So Windows key and F. Yep, that works. And... Open a terminal, Windows and T. That works. Launch web, web browser, Windows and W. And there we go. And what else? We've got some uh, Rofi commands here. Uh, they all seem to run a pretty much similar um, uh, command. Rofi run. So we can hit Alt F1 or Control Space. Let's try Control Space. And as you can see down here, this allows you to launch applications or search for applications on the system. That's great. Let's hit Escape to get out of there. And then we have Windows Key X, which is Rofi Run Dash L, which I think is the logout key, but let me just verify it. Yes, it is. So you can lock the screen, log out, reboot, or shut down. 
and on it goes you can export explore the key bindings uh, to your heart's content you can of course with open box um, edit the key bindings in RC XML and go through and do it yourself very nice you may want to play around with the theme you may like the grayish theme uh, I'm all good with it to be honest let's run a web browser here uh, sorry a terminal here um, I want to see what's actually on the system so if I do cat etc pacman dot conf and let's see what we've got so it looks pretty standard up to here uh, we've got core extra community multi-lib all enabled by default and we have the arch labs repo with three servers I'm not quite clear on uh, what's provided by the Ar Arch Labs. Oops. By the Arch Labs uh, repo, but we can always do that with pack list. Uh, Arch Labs underscore repo, I think it was. And we've got something called Arch Labs Bath, B A P H. Okay. We've got some common things, which I presume are themes more than anything else. We've got fonts, i3 lock, key rings, paranoid, whatever that is. And you're basically your configurations in for the scale directory. Okay. And Arch Labs wallpapers. I believe Bath is actually like an AR, AUR helper. Uh, I'll have a look in a minute because I presume uh, Yay isn't actually installed on this system. But let's have a look and just check that out. No, Yay's not there. So we're going to have to use Bath if we wanted to install something from the AUR like Yay. Not entirely sure how to do that, so let's see if it's got a man page yes it has it's an AUR helper or rather it's a small bash script that aids with installing and updating packages from the AR AUR it's not a package manager other than installing and updating you'll still require Pacman yeah so Pacman for your basic uh, packages and BAF for your AUR stuff so let's just see what the syntax might be. Uh, I is for install. Okay. Well, let's try something. Let's go bath dash I and let's install yay. View or edit the package build? I don't think so. And let's see what happens here. It's asking for my password. Proceed with installation. And it's installing the Go library, which is required for Yay, before we go any further. Um, once Yay is installed, I, I, I must be honest, uh, on my laptop, I will probably continue to use Yay because it's what I'm familiar with more than anything else. While that's installing, I should just say, when uh, I rebooted my laptop, the wireless wasn't working. Now, I'm not that surprised with that because um, it uses the WL driver. It's a Broadcom chip. Now, the WL driver was actually installed on Arch Labs, but because I picked the LTS kernel and the LTS kernel only, um, it wouldn't work. So what I had to do was I had to install the Broadcom-WL-DKMS driver and also uh, install the LTS kernel headers, and then everything worked. That's all it took. 
Um, which packages do I want to remove? Uh, oh, right, okay. Proceed with installation. Yes, please. And that should be it. So let me just do yay, SYU. And there we are. It's all working. I'll just do a quick update there. Okay, so it comes with a, a an AUR helper script uh, just to get you started, and then you can figure out what you want to do from there. So, guys, um, that's all I really want to cover on Arch Labs. It's a relatively straightforward installation. It seems to be configured nicely. I like that it's kept the right click menu here, but it's got lots of pre-configured stuff. It's running very light. I know this is now in virtual box, but let me run HTOP again and see where we're up to. Well, we've been running it for a while and opening and closing different applications, and it's still only at 339 megs. Pretty impressive. Let's go and have a chat about this. So that was Arch Labs. The installation was uh, fairly straightforward. Unfortunately, the wireless didn't activate for me right during the installation, but I understand why, because I'd picked the LTS kernel. And with this dodgy Broadcom chip on the little uh, ThinkPad, I couldn't really have expected it to. But other than that, everything installed beautifully. Um, I'm going to play with it for the coming three or four weeks and see what I feel. Um, I decided to put OpenBox on this little ThinkPad, and I could have done an Archway install and just set up OpenBox my way. But there's two reasons I chose Arch Labs. Uh, one is <laughs> it's just quick and easy. <laughs> it saves me time. Uh, and secondly, I'm... I can do the Arch My Way installation. What I'm interested in seeing is what other distros that are Arch-based offer in terms of configuration and initial setup. And I was pretty impressed. Um, I learned a few things today. Um, I, I've learned about that menu on the Tint 2 bar, which I may well play with myself on uh, my main desktop. I like the right-click menu. I like the little preferences that have been added to it. Um, I'm not sure that the black and white colour scheme is necessarily for me, and I will no doubt change and fiddle about with that. But nevertheless, um, it's a nice-looking distro, and uh, the RAM usage, I mean, it's minimal, absolutely minimal. Uh, which is great. It, it's just going to fly on that little ThinkPad. So I'm really impressed. Because it's Arch, I can do what I want with it. I can install anything I want with it and configure it because I'm familiar with the system. But for those considering um, a basic Arch install who, who perhaps are not as comfortable with the Arch scripts, such as Arch Phi, and would rather have something that's entirely menu-driven and ends up with a pre-configured system, it may be an option. There's many other options out there, of course. Uh, Arco Linux is one. All the scripts that I've looked at over the previous months do the job as well. But this just adds a twist in terms of its look and feel. And uh, initial impressions for me are, it looks pretty good. Uh, there must be a reason why people keep asking me to review it. Um, I'll see what the forums are like as well. I'm not sure that I'm much of a forum contributor. I haven't looked at the Arch Labs forums, but uh, I'm going to take a look over the coming week. So, it's another viable option, and... Uh, it stays true to my roots of uh, being either Debian-based or Arch-based. And, uh, yeah, give it a spin, people. Just before I go, don't forget that uh, 
I am now on Library as well, so if you'd like to join, that's great. I'll put a link down in the information in the video description. And uh, I've also started up uh, a few months ago uh, a Facebook group. Um, we're still a very small group. There's less than 20 of us there. But if you want to join, by all means. Um, and that's about it. I only have one more thing to do before I say goodbye for this uh, this particular video. I just want to very quickly show you my desktop. Ooh. What's that, you might ask? Well, why don't you guess? It's not i3. Um, I may well do a review of it at some point, but I've decided... Um, i3 was enough for a few weeks. We'll talk about other window managers in the future. So, guys, have a great weekend. I hope you're staying well in this current environment. Uh, I'm uh, isolated myself and uh, a little bit of a loss now. All the pubs have shut. What I'm going to do with my Saturday night. Um, but cheers, everyone, and I'll see you next week. <laughs>